was the eve of the Ren Fair, and all through the place, every female was spreading raw eggs on her face. She followed with rose water and toxic white lead, then plucked off all of her eyebrows, tis said. Her lips were of crimson, her eyes big and wide, for as she had placed drops of poisonous flour inside. Then off to the fair with its jousting and fun, though thanks to the lead, her days were near done. That went from a parody of a Christmas poem to a Stephen King book in like 30 seconds. First, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, I am sitting on the floor, and no, I don't usually hang my calendar this low, but it like needed something in the background, so yeah. Also, I am wearing a turban, in case you have noticed. That was really anticlimactic. Major Medusa vibes. So if you are not blessed with naturally curly hair and yet you still want to create an Elizabethan style-esque look for the Renaissance Fair, you're gonna need to do something insane like this. Soak your entire head, or make it simple and just take a shower. Split your hair in half. No, I don't mean you should actually split your hair in half. That's called getting split ends, and it's not good. After you've brushed it out, it is then time to start twisting. To do this sort of twist, you're going to need to start with little teeny strands up at the front of your hair. And you just kind of do the thing. Twist. I really don't know how else to explain it. It's like French braiding, except easy. I should probably mention that we're at like curling my hair right now. So this is the day before the Renaissance Fair, just in case this lovely child had not convinced you of that yet. And so by tomorrow morning, I should have lusciously poofy curly locks. With any luck. Now when you get to about here, you should have a strand in the back that's about even with the other two strands. So you're just going to ditch the whole twist thing and just start to braid. I prefer to use an English braid as opposed to a rope braid because the English braid is just more Elizabethan and everyone knows that ropes weren't invented until 1746. Up until that time, people were just using crocheted chains. It didn't work. Thus, the necessity of rope being invented. Also, I have found that rope braids don't really curl my hair very much, so... Yeah. But also historical reasons. When you finished off this braid with hair elastic, go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side. Once that is complete, go ahead and take a nice long nap, like maybe 10 hours long, and allow your hair to fully dry. And with that, I shall be seeing you in the morning. wondering, yes, everything that I write to you in the poem is actually what they would do, and no, I will not be doing that today. Let's start with the hair. While this is arguably very curly, I want it to be very floofy, because those Elizabethan hairdos were all like, so, floof time. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty floofy. I scoured the internet for Elizabethan hair tutorials, but unfortunately they were either wigs or people who just went for something kind of Elizabethan-esque. So to create those insane ploofy thingies, I'm just gonna have to wing it. Um, so we're gonna see how this goes. I'm just gonna divide my hair right about here, from ear to ear. So the bits in the front are going to create the two, like, poofs that she'd have in the front of her head. So that's the first order of business. And in order to accomplish the poof, I'm going to go forward a couple of centuries because I'm not entirely certain they used this back in the Elizabethan era, though I have no reason to believe they didn't. Extra hair. This is all stuff I've collected off of my hairbrush for the past couple months. And before you sit there squealing about the fact that I'm holding a giant thing of hair right now, tell me the difference. I mean, they're both dead, so it's not like, life hair, dead hair, ooh, do your biology class over again if you want to use that argument. It is to create something called a rat, which sounds absolutely hysterically gross, but it's really just 
something kind of along the lines of this. So it was just like a little poofy thing made from extra hair or from horse hair or from other people's hair that would add extra volume to hairstyles. So we're gonna try this out. Idea, but I'm not gonna add another rat just because I have run out of rodents. This is where these things come in handy, these like little curly pin things. I honestly prefer these over bobby pins just because they have a much more secure hold. So, you know, if you're planning to wear something like this to a tornado watching event, you know, you're gonna want something to hold your hair together, am I right? Okay, so I actually really like how this looks. I'm going to now start working on the makeup. So women back then would actually use egg whites on their faces as kind of like a priming agent before they did their makeup. I've never done that before. I don't think now is gonna be the time that I'm gonna try just because, you know, we leave in like half an hour and I don't wanna have some kind of like, oh yeah, apparently my skin doesn't like egg whites situation, so sunscreen. So I'm actually going to try to get it in my eyebrows, which might seem kind of weird and a little gross, but back then eyebrows were supposed to be very thin and pale, and my eyebrows are neither. Thanks Eastern European genetics. So I'm just going to stick a bunch of sunscreen in there and then attempt to powder them. So the powder I'm using is this like silkeny bath powder from Bath and Body Works, which I'm fairly certain is like a million years old, but the active ingredient here apparently is oat flour, so you could probably use talcum powder as well, but uh, as we do not have any small children in the house, talcum powder is not something that's slipped a lot, so why did I grab that? I lost my train of thought. Ha! So I could have used something like a face paint or a concealer for this, but my skin tone is already very light, and the likelihood of me finding a concealer lighter than my skin tone is definitely very low. And I've noticed that face paint just kind of like cakes and gets gross after a while and it cracks if you smile, which actually was kind of what happened back then too with their white lead. But I'm not really looking to be that historically accurate. I would like to enjoy a bit of mirth at the room fair today, so let's see if we can do something about these brows though. pink eyeshadow here just because I don't care. Not bad at all. Now about the eyes. One of the things people really forget about the Elizabethan era while they're too busy focusing on the white lead paste they were smearing on their faces, they would actually put drops of the belladonna flower in their eyes to make them kind of like big and shiny because the belladonna flower contains poison that will essentially relax your muscles, and so it caused the pupils of the eye to dilate, and it kind of made for a, you know, more doll-like cutesy look, which you should probably not do. Just, just, you know, really don't think it's a good idea to be sticking toxins in your eyeballs, but it's up to you, I guess. They used a pigment called Vermilion for lipstick, and I'm fairly certain they mixed it with beeswax just because that's actually an ingredient in a lot of lipsticks. But I 
I stop talking now so I can actually do this without putting a giant smear on my face. A little clownish, but you know, not a bad look. Now for the finishing touches. My original costume idea was actually Bloody Mary, and I was gonna slash the dress up and cover it in fake blood and turn into Bloody Mary's ghost, but then I realized I couldn't reuse the costume for anything, and so I decided on Mary Queen of Scots. But then I realized it would be rather difficult to turn my hair a convincing shade of red without committing to something semi-permanent, and then I attempted to make a hair powder, which was sort of red-colored. Unfortunately, I added too much turmeric to the mix and ended up dyeing my scalp yellow, so moving on from that, I'm just going to channel my inner Scott and add this little, like, bagpipe necklace, so... Go Scotland. I am very happy with how this costume came out. The only thing I'm lacking is pearl earrings, so I think I'm gonna go bug my mother and see if she has any. Update, no pearls, but I did get these cute little dangly ones that I really like. The Renaissance Fair was a ton of fun, and my costume and hair held up relatively well, which I was very excited about. Some of the highlights of the fair included watching the Masters of Dueling, who are just about the coolest humans on the planet, and later getting pictures with and getting to have a nice long conversation about sword fighting with said humans, which was a major thrill. Then we watched some guys in metal suits bash sticks into each other, which for some reason was oddly satisfying. I don't know, maybe those medieval folks were onto something. Then we fed a bird some money. Not entirely certain what his deal was, but you know. Hey, I have a fantastic idea. Let's play spot the people who should go back to Comic-Con and quit polluting the Renaissance Fair with science fiction! Enjoyed some wonderful strawberry lemonade. Contributed to an art collection. Risked my luck and got a fairy blessing or a curse. Update, it was a blessing. May your next year's shed be happy ones. Somebody give me really good news, please. Then I got in a battle of wits with my cousin, the witch queen's daughter. Don't believe me, Anne Boleyn was supposedly witch. Look it up. And I refused yet another offer of marriage from Lord Dudley. Much to the chagrin of her majesty. Court relations, am I right? There's one in every family. Anyway, Renaissance Fair was a ton of fun. If you're in Utah around this time next year, make sure to go. It was very enjoyable, and I shall be seeing you anon.